So welcome to the compressor chamber of the hydro wedge. We will be carrying out, we will be carrying out compression testing, that is flow stress test on aluminum sample. So the accessories that comes with this setup, if you want to carry out this test, and these accessories include um, the ISO T anvils that you can see here. That's what the Glebo uses to compress the flow stress specimen or sample. We also have the specimen autoloader or sample autoloader. So because during the test, you don't want to put your hand in here because, you know, you would mess up your hand. So we use an autoloader to load the sample, and that's the function of this. It's also an accessories that we fitted here for this purpose. We also have a transducer. In simple terms, we call it LVDT. Basically, this, transdu this transducer measures the, the, the strain of the sample during deformation. So um, I will be loading the aluminum sample now on the auto loader and set the and set up for the experiment so the first thing i would like to do is to clean the anvils because in previous tests you might have some debris some dead dust or something or even grease from the lubricants that you apply so i like to clean with ethanol before i do the next thing So you just clean the anvils with ethanol and be sure that it's clean and I think that's it. So the next thing I'll do is I'll apply a lubricant on the surface of the anvils. Why do you need to apply a lubricant? Because you want to minimize the effect of friction on your results because once the anvils grips the sample, it exerts some frictional force on it. So you need lubrication so that that wouldn't affect your flow stress. Your flow stress is the result that you obtain from this test. So uh, if you're testing steel or titanium, you use graphite foil that I'm showing you here. Or you can use tantalum foil, but tantalum foil is quite expensive. So this is much cheaper. But for aluminum, we found out that just using nickel paste is sufficient. So maybe I forgot something there. So when you're doing titanium and steel or other type of metals, you accept aluminum, it's better to use either tantalum foil or graphite foil. The graphite foil is cheaper. And then you attach this to the anvil using the nickel paste. But for aluminum, it's better to just use the nickel paste. The only essence of this is to minimize friction because friction could affect your results. Frictional effects would affect the flow stress that you obtain from the test. So now I'm going to apply just um, nickel paste on the anvils. So these anvils are made from tungsten carbide. So you apply on both sides. And that's enough for aluminum. If we were to test titanium or some composites or steel, I would recommend that you also have the graphite foil or tantalum foil to serve as your lubricant because that helps you to minimize the effect of friction. Now that we're done with that, um, this is our sample that we've applied the wraparound metal to attach the thermocouple. We will now put the thermocouple on the specimen autoloader. And when you put that, then you want to extend that to the center of the anvil so that it is well positioned at the center of the anvil. So, what happens is as soon as you run your program on the computer that I will show you next, 
the computer sends information to the main load unit and it executes the program. At certain amount of force exerted on the sample, this autoloader will trigger. If it does not trigger, you have to abort the experiment. Otherwise, you will damage the autoloader and you don't want to damage the autoloader. So it is designed such that as you're running the experiment, the anvils grips the sample. And once it grips the sample, there is a certain amount of force that is exerted on the sample. Then that sends signals to the autoloader, and the autoloader loader retracts itself while the sample remains in place. If the autoloader does not retract itself, you have to abort the experiment so as to preserve the life of the autoloader. But now we have our sample in place. Now we need to connect the thermocouple. So there's something quite tricky here. If you look at this, you have yellow and red. If you're not careful, you would connect the red thermocouple to the red terminal and the yellow to the black. That is wrong. The correct way to do it on this machine is to connect the red thermocouple to the black terminal and of course the yellow thermocouple to the red terminal. So one quick way to remember is the red thermocouple is not red on the terminal. So once you connect that, what you would see is that the temperature of the sample would be on the global console. I'll show you that in just a few seconds. So previously on the compression chamber, I already showed you that we had four um, terminals, TC1, TC2, TC3, and TC4. But we are using TC1 for this test because we are going to connect our thermocouple to TC1. So before connecting the thermocouple, the temperature would read 8,000, as you can see here. And we are concerned with the TC1. So it's going to read 8,000 Celsius. But we do know that the te actual temperature is not 8,000. So once we connect the thermocouple, you will see the actual temperature of the sample. So what, why is this important? It is important because when you're carrying out the test and you are around maybe 500, 600 degrees Celsius or maybe 900, depending on your testing temperature, and all of a sudden you see 8,000, then you should know that the thermocouple is no more in place. Then you have to abort your experiment and start all over again. So now I'm just going to connect the thermocouple on the terminal and then show you how this change from 8,000 to um, whatever the temperature is. I think it will be close to room temperature because we have not started the experiment yet. So I'm going to connect the thermocouple now and keep an eye on the TC1 and see what happens. You would see that it has changed to 22 Celsius, indicating that the thermocouple is, has been connected. During the experiment, as you eat up, this will continue to go up. You can also see it here, it will continue going up until you reach the targeted um, temperature. So you have K here indicating that it's a K-type thermocouple. And the, TCR, the TC3 is representing the outer thermocouple. But we are not using that for now. We are only using the TC1 thermocouple. So we will still come back to this console to put, take you through what's happening as we continue to run the experiment. But now, let's go and set up our parameters for today's test on the computer.